There we go. We're recording. All right. Welcome to Painting Through the Pandemic. I'm Shauna Sue, owner of Crooked Door Studio in Uptown Marysville. Um, I'm so excited to be here. I can't wait to do this painting tonight. I've heard um, I've heard a couple of people say this is going to be hard. Nah, it'll be fine. We'll step by step it. Um, this is my reminder to you that my painting probably won't look like this. Yours may not look like this. That's okay, right? This is just our inspiration that we're using to see where our where our minds take us tonight, right? It's just inspiration. I'm gonna try to follow it and and uh, get it to look pretty similar, but it's gonna be different, and that's okay. So I say that to let you know that it's okay. Whatever yours looks like when we're done, it's fine. It, they're all gonna be different. They're gonna be uniquely you. That's the beautiful part about art, right? It's all uniquely you. So before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and talk for a little bit, give everybody the chance to breathe and center and settle in a little bit. Um, I wanna go through supplies. We'll talk about how we're gonna do this painting. First thing I like to mention though, I am recording this. So if at any point you start to feel frustrated and it's just not going well, happens, happens to all of us, happens to me too, right? If you start to feel frustrated, just catch your breath, put your stuff down, recognize that maybe tonight's not your night and that's okay. I am recording this so you can come back to it later. So what I'm gonna do since it takes me for those of you that have painted with me before, you know this, my rural internet is sometimes special. And sometimes it takes me a while to upload video to YouTube. So what I'll do, as soon as we're done tonight, I'll receive a Zoom link within like five minutes of finishing. I'll receive a Zoom link. I'll put that Zoom link recording in the event as a post. So you can go to that. So if you wanna finish your painting tonight, you'll be able to, you won't have to wait for me to, for my internet to upload to YouTube. And then once it's uploaded to YouTube, I'll swap those links out, okay? I, since we are recording tonight, I have everyone muted without the ability to unmute yourselves. That way, since we're recording, the video stays on me. With Zoom, based on who's talking, the video can jump around, so. You're, you're on me tonight. Um, near the end, I'll unmute everyone. I'll give you the opportunity to unmute and we can talk. So since you are muted, if you have any questions, type them in the chat box, okay? You see me looking off to the side every now and then. It's because I'm looking at the, um, I'm looking at you all in gallery view and I hope this is the romper room portion of the night. I see Marie and I see Elise and I see Buttery. And I, oh, so many friends tonight. All my people. I'm so glad you guys are here to paint. That makes my heart happy. And star, I see star. And if I don't see you, it means you're on the second page because we have 49 logged in tonight, which is awesome. So, okay. And to those of you that have donated, Thank you so much. You're the reason that I'm able to pay my rent on my studio space and keep my studio space reserved for when this whole ridiculous pandemic is over and we can all get together and play at the studio again. So thank you so much for helping me pay my rent. I do appreciate that. Okay, oh, deep breath. Supplies, let's talk about supplies for the night. So we're all painting at home, right? We're not in, a, we're not at the studio. So we want to take a look around and make sure there's nothing around that you're super concerned about getting paint on. The paint that we're using, the paint I'm using, and if you got paint from the studio, from me, the paint you're using is acrylic paint. It's water-based, water-soluble, but if you get it on your clothes and it dries, it's a real bear to get out. Okay, acrylic paint, when it dries, it turns to plastic. When it gets in fiber, it's real hard to get out. So take a moment, look around. It's real easy when you're painting to flick off the edge of the canvas and fling paint accidentally. So take a peek, okay, look around. With that said, 
make sure you have a paint shirt or an apron on something you're not super concerned about getting paint on okay so i have i have my apron i have an old paint shirt too just in case um i have canvas i'm using a 16 by 20 stretched canvas it's a lovely size to work on right um i have my canvas vertical because our inspiration painting works really well vertical um I will leave it up to you, though, if you want to flip your canvas sideways, if you want to paint on a different size, that's up to you. It's your painting, right? It's whatever you want to do with it. But I'm going to keep mine vertical tonight. I think it works well with the with the tree, with the bark. So I'm going to stay vertical. With that said, decide now if you do have a stretched canvas, decide now if you're going to paint your edges. You want to make that decision early on. What you don't want to do is start painting your edges and then stop halfway through. That just looks sloppy and unfinished. So either paint them or not, never in between. Okay. So there's my canvas. See, that's ready. I have a cup. I like to use something heavy. I use a mason jar. Coffee cup is lovely. You're less likely to knock it over. Okay. Something, something a little heavier, a little more substantial halfway full with cool or cold water, never warm or hot. It always wants to be cool or cold, okay? I have a stack of paper towels down here that I can blot my brushes on, right? And then brushes. We can do this whole painting with a big brush. We always, I shouldn't say always, there are always exceptions to, to the rules, right? But we usually start with a big brush and then work our way down smaller into more detailed as we go. So here's my big brush, my big oval wash. Yours might be square, might be flat, but something big. A medium brush, whichever one makes you happy, just something not as big as the big brush, something in the medium range. And then a pointy brush. He doesn't look super pointy, but he will be once I get him, once I get him in the water cup. So something for details. I'm gonna take those brushes while I'm not using them, right? Put them in my water cup and leave them there. That's a good reminder that when I'm done with the brush, it goes back in the water cup with his friends. That way I don't have crusty brushes getting all dried out with paint in them and ruining them, okay? Let's talk about optional supplies tonight. I got out a whole slew of optional things tonight, things I might wanna play with. I got a really tiny, tiny brush. I thought I might use this for whiskers. It's just, a re there's only a couple bristles in there, right? It's really tiny. Something for whiskers, something that will help me with the eyes. Might use this for the nose, some tiny little hairs. Optional, you don't have to have it, but something really small. I have a toothbrush may or may not have one you don't have to have one that's okay but i might use a toothbrush to splatter the snow that's part of the reason I, why i had you look around and make sure there's nothing you're worried about getting paint on because splatter is hard to control and you may decide you don't want to you may use your brush and put your snow on there with your big brush but i might play with a toothbrush so if you have one get it out and lay it to the side pencil i'll talk about that in a minute palette knife i know i put this on the list you may or may not have a palette knife that's okay i think this might be fun to play in the tree bark if you were with me last week we used a palette knife and i'll talk about a makeshift palette knife we used it to drag side to side for the tree bark tonight a palette knife might be fun to use the short edge and drag vertically so if you don't have a palette knife, you can take an extra plate or a piece of junk mail that's like a card stock. You wanna use something more firm than paper. You can use cardboard if you have it, right? Cut it into squares that are about two inches and you could use that. Uh, you could use an old credit card, um, just something that has a, a stiff edge to it. So if you don't have a palette knife, you can use any one of those things, okay? Paint pen, I always keep a paint pen in my art bag. 
just because I'm really bad at signing my name with a brush. So I like to keep a paint pen just for, just for that. I have an extra plate. I'll show you that in just a second, what I'm gonna do with that. So if you don't have an extra, an extra palette plate, an extra paper plate, grab a dinner plate real quick. You want a decent sized plate and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then paint, let's talk about our colors. Okay, so these are the colors I have tonight. So I have white, I have block out white. And if you got paint from the studio, this is exactly what you have. We have block out white, bright red, the red tonight doesn't matter. We always have the conversation about bright red versus fire red, doesn't matter tonight because we're not mixing it with blue. So I'm using bright red, green oxide. I've had a couple of uh, private message questions about what if I don't have green oxide? It's okay. Um, I would veer away from phthalo if you have phthalo green because phthalo is more turquoisey blue. And that's gonna make your painting a lot cooler and a lot less warm. If phthalo green is all you have in your supplies, mix it with a little yellow and white and that'll help make it a little warmer, a little more limey. Brown, any brown will do. I'm using burnt umber and then Mars black. So those are the colors I have on my palette, those five colors. I'm gonna do this whole thing with those five, okay? And if you don't have something that I have, don't worry about it. We'll wing it, it'll be fine, okay? All right, are we ready? Are we ready to get started? I feel like this is getting shorter every week. It's only 7.13. It's usually about quarter after by the time I'm done talking. Okay. I don't see anybody like panicked, nobody's flailing yet. So let's get started, shall we? So the first thing I wanna do, let's talk about this, how we're gonna step through this, okay? So I like to give you some direction of where we're going, some roadmap for the evening. So the way we're gonna do this, I wanna make sure the knot hole in my tree is plenty big enough for my raccoon. Sometimes we have a hard time filling the canvas. We make things really small. That's what I'm gonna use a plate for. I'll show you that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw, draw the knot hole and fill it in. And then we're gonna work on the bark on our tree. And then we'll start to lay out, map out our, our raccoon, his, his head, his head and his little arm there. And then we might come back to the tree and play a little bit while that's drying. And then we'll get his hat and his scarf. And the very last thing we're gonna do, which is hard for some of us, so I'll talk about that in a second. The very last thing we're gonna do is that fine detail, the eyes, the nose, the whiskers. Whenever we do um, paint your pet, when the studio was open, when we do paint your pet, it's so hard because we do, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, very last thing. And we're like, what is happening? This does not look like an animal. It looks so weird. But the minute you get the eyes, the nose on there, it's like, oh, there it is. There he is. So trust the process. It'd be fine. Okay. And look at that, 715. <laughs> let's, let's do this. It feels official now. I talked for my 15 minutes. Okay plate if again if you don't have a plate find a find a dinner plate find something to use but i'm going to use this and just lightly trace around it this is going to be for my knot hole to make sure i have it big enough for my raccoon i don't want it to be a tiny little hole in the middle of this canvas and have it be all tree so i'm going to use this as my guide I've got it in the middle, maybe a little higher than middle. And if you don't have a pencil, use a small brush and a little bit of brown paint. But I'm just going to lightly trace around it to give me, oops, to give me an idea of how big that needs to be for my raccoon. Ooh. 
really light, right? Just a real light outline of a circle on there. Again, it's close to the middle, but it might be up a little bit. Really doesn't matter. Just somewhere near the middle of your canvas. Okay. That was the only thing I needed the pencil for tonight. I'm gonna just toss it out the way. Okay. Now, now we're ready to paint. So if you have new brushes from the studio, when take that biggest brush and tap, tap, tap it in the bottom of the water cup, gently, you wanna soften it up a little bit. If you have new brushes, when they come from the factory, they come with like a starch on them to hold them stiff in shipping so the bristles don't get damaged. So you wanna get that starch out of there. I always do this with my old brushes because there's always a little bit of paint residue left over. So I wanna soften it up a little bit and get that residue out of there. All right, dry it off, biggest brush, dry it off. And let's paint this black. Easy enough, right? Anytime you take paint, we always go in the edge, in the edge of the puddle, never the middle. You don't wanna mess the whole puddle up. So I'm always gonna pull in the edge. And I don't want it necessarily to be a circle. I want it to be kind of like a big fat raindrop. So I'm gonna take that circle and fill it in, but I'm gonna give it that little point at the top. And we're just gonna fill the whole thing in black. I'm not super concerned about staying in, the, in that line I just put on there. The sole purpose of that tracing that circle was making sure that my circle, my knot hole was big enough. Again, because we have a hard time, I see it all the time, we'll make it really small and we'll have this tiny little raccoon head in the middle of this ginormous canvas. So we wanna make sure off the bat that this, um, this knot hole is plenty big enough. I might even exaggerate mine out a little bit further. Not afraid of that, right? Oh, and everybody breathe. I like to tell people a lot. I, I've come to believe like 75% of being an artist is breathing and being okay with what happens and not trying to control the paintbrush. It's letting it happen. When you try to control it, things get weird and then you end up fighting it. So just let it happen. Ooh, my knot hole's getting big. That just means I'll have a, a big raccoon head in there because the raccoon head is gonna pretty well fill. It's gonna pretty well fill at least the bottom half of that knot hole. Good. When I'm done, not gonna rinse my brush out. I'm okay if there's black in my brush. I like to tell stories when I paint and I feel like I need to tell you the story. When we, um, when we first moved into where we live right now, we live out in the country in an 1860s homestead. And there we have catalpa trees, if you know what those are, uh, cigar trees, some people call them. Cigar trees are beautiful because they grow so straight and so fast. There's a story behind those, I'll bore you with later. But um, we have a lot of catalpa trees. And it's something you usually only see on really old farmsteads. And one of my catalpa trees, because they grow so fast, it, it's hollow in the middle. 
And when we first moved in, there's a knot hole much like this. It's about that big. It's big enough for a raccoon to get in. And every spring we have a mama coon in there and coon babies and it's adorable. So I love this painting because it thinks of my, makes me think of my catalpa tree and my, uh, my mama coon and babies. And then when they graduate from the catalpa tree, they move to the barn. And then from the barn, they move to the backwoods. So it's a whole process. Okay, we've got that. So I still have, I haven't rinsed my brush out. If you have, that's okay, but I haven't. I'm not worried about the black that's in it. We're gonna use a lot of brown, little black, little white every now and again, and we're gonna paint our tree bark, okay? I've got some black in there. Everything else is gonna be bark. So with that little bit of black in there, I'm gonna take a big old swipe of brown. And I'm gonna do big, chunky, big chunky swipes. And do you see how I'm contouring around that hole? So again, black or brown. Maybe this time I'll take a little bit of white at the same time on my brush. And big chunky swipes. You want this to be chunky. You wanna see those brush strokes. The, the hardest part for people during this part is they want to paint it until it's all one pretty smooth, smooth color. Not what we want. I want to see all those lovely shades of brown, a little black every now and then. So again, brown, white, tiny black every now and then mostly brown. And I'm following the contour of that knot hole that I've put on there. So I'm gonna take a big old chunk of brown, a little bit of black, maybe a little bit of white. I'm just gonna let that play on my canvas and mix. When I get down here to the bottom, I'm gonna swoop it like a smile and then bring it down in a Y. Okay. Now I'm gonna do this for a little bit, but this is the part where I thought it might be fun to play with a palette knife. We'll see, not there yet, but that might be fun. And if you have decided to paint your edges, now's the time. So if you're gonna paint your edges, wrap that tree bark right on up and around there. It's easier to do it now than it is to try to go back and match that color up later, okay? and get right up against that black knot hole. Now, if you look at the original painting, you'll see there's a green in there. I'm gonna wait a little bit on the green. I'm gonna play in the, in the brown, little white, little black first. I'll play in that um, in that green here in a minute.
I'm using a lot of paint and really chunky, aggressive brush strokes. So let's keep going until that entire canvas is covered, right? You'll have the black knot hole and then you'll have that bark. And then I think I might come in and play with the knife once I have it all covered. Okay, so let's get that base, that base coat on there first. <clears throat> and if I could give you any extra guidance here, what I would say. Don't be stingy with your paint. Get a lot, it's so much easier when you're covering big spaces like this to get a lot on your brush. So I am literally scooping paint, right? A lot of paint. So I'm taking a lot of brown, little bit of black, little bit of white. I have so much paint, it's gonna drip off my brush. And then I'm gonna get it on there and then move it around. Oh, and edges, don't forget, if you have decided to paint them, don't forget them. Because again, what you don't want to do is get halfway through and stop painting your edges because that just looks sloppy and unfinished. And as we do this, I like to let you know the direction we're going and be respectful of everyone's time. So it's 728, 745 will um we'll move on. So I'm gonna cover this and then I might play with the palette knife a little bit. And then we'll see at 7.45 how we feel. So as we paint the background, I should point out um, the paint that we're using is student grade paint. I love student grade paint because it's inexpensive. I can buy it by the bucket for relatively cheap, right? It's a great thing to learn with, but you'll find some colors are really uh, weak and really transparent. Brown, the brown that we're using is a really good example of that. 
by mixing it with a little black and a little white, it's gonna make it more opaque. It's gonna make it a little more solid, which is perfect. But if you mess with it too much, if you go back over and try to try to fix and, and paint and paint and paint over the same spot, you'll start to see how transparent it is and you'll start to pick up with your brush half dried paint and it'll start to look weird and kind of like curdled because it's half dry. So my, my guidance to you is once it's covered, let's give it a little bit to dry because if I go back in here and I try to start fixing and playing, there's a real good possibility. I'm gonna start picking up that half dried paint. And it's gonna start looking weird. So I've got it like this. How about I'm gonna leave it like that until 7.45. And then I'm gonna come in and play with the knife and maybe put a little green in. But I'm gonna give it a little time to dry right now. Little. As I say that, I get in there and start playing again, right? Because I can't leave well enough alone. Okay, so 745. We'll move on, we'll play with a palette knife. Again, if you don't have a palette knife, um, you can cut, cut up a, um, a paper plate or a piece of junk mail that's like kind of cardstock, heavier than regular paper. Um, you just want something, or you can use an old credit card. You just want something with a firm, with a firm edge on it. So I'm going to take this time while you guys are painting your tree. I'm going to take this time to refill my beverage. That way I'll stop touching that. We'll let it dry. Oh, you guys, I'm so excited about this. I can't wait to see how this little guy turns out. I'm constantly thinking and mapping it out, right? looking at it that his his little arm be right here with his little coon fingers hanging out over the hole his head is a lovely football shape that just about fills the bottom half of that knot hole his little hat comes up it follows the uh, the line of that knot hole right it comes up to a point up into the the point of the knot hole. Oh, so fun. I was even thinking he has his little scarf on. I was even thinking if you wanted to bring the scarf outside the tree, you could. That would be super cute. Have the little tail of the scarf blow out of the knot hole. Oh, so fun. Okay. Oh, yes. When you're, uh, when you're done, I just saw that question. When you're done, brush in water cup. You could clean it a little in the water cup if you want. Tap, tap, tap. Um, I know the time comes for, um, we like to have clean water. Not worried about it right now. Your water's gonna be murky from the, from the colors in your brush. Not worried about clean water yet. I'll tell you when the time comes. I'm not usually worried about getting clean water until I know I'm gonna move on to a clean white on my canvas. So not, not yet, we're not there yet. So yes, brushes and water cup, 7.45, we'll move on. So you got about 10 minutes. I'm gonna go refill my beverage. I'll be back.
There's Lisa. Hi, honey. Um, I'm super curious to see if you're going to do a raccoon or if you're going to do a uh, baby Yoda. Oh, I know, right? You kind of need baby Yoda in the tree. Oh, she disappeared. Oh, no. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. That might need to happen. Okay, about six minutes. Again, we're giving, I'm giving this time to dry. There comes a point you gotta stop touching it because you'll start picking up half dried paint and it'll start looking weird. I'm not, you know, the more I think about it, I'm not super concerned about that for this painting because we do want that to look like tree bark. We want it to look really rough. So if you do feel like it's starting to look curdled and funky, it'll be okay. <clears throat> it's funny, I've painted with this kind of paint long enough though. I know, I know what it's capable of and it'll start to make me crazy after a while. That's why I've stopped touching it. And um, happy birthday, Tamisha. I've seen you on here. Okay, I've seen the name on here, but I haven't seen you on here. But happy early birthday. Er, early? Late. Happy birthday. Aw, date night from Pennsylvania. I love that. I'm curious. I, I wonder who's the furthest away tonight. I don't see my friend Tracy from Guatemala on here. So it's fair game. Who, who do we think is the furthest? We've got Pennsylvania. Lots of Central Ohio. So if you're in Central Ohio, you don't count. Not for this game. Oh, ooh, Michigan. All right. Is that Connecticut? Yes. Ooh, and Lisa's using Liquitex tonight. Yeah, you are. I do love the Liquitex. Are you using soft body or hard body, Lisa? Let me know. Is it, is it firm? A Athens. Ooh, Manitoba, Canada. You might win. You're out of country. Manitoba, you, I think you win tonight. Ooh, heavy body, right, Lace? That, that'll give you some really cool texture in your tree. Four minutes, four minutes and we'll, we'll play a little more in that tree. So now's the time if, Jen Dutter, I saw other uh, other people with you there. I was like, who'd you talk into painting tonight? So you're in Magnolia. You know, that's where my girl's at, right? That's where Summer's at. You knew that. Hi, Jen's mom. So three minutes, we'll move on. We will play with a knife a little bit. We'll lay a little bit of green in there. This is giving that black time to dry so we can lay our raccoon on there next. It always feels like when we paint, we jump around a lot. 
we jump around, we always try to think big and then work our way in. But at the same time, we move around to give different places time to dry. We love acrylic paint because it dries really fast. We hate acrylic paint because it dries really fast. But that's, um, that's the versatility of acrylic paint. We like that about it. Okay, nobody else has chimed in. Manitoba, I do believe you win. There's no prize, but you win. I'm, I would be curious to find out how you heard about us, Manitoba. I could call you by name, but you are Manitoba from here on out. Oh, and Riley, you're in Athens. You're not in California tonight. And I love that Pennsylvania has a date night tonight. That makes me happy. Paint date nights are always the best. Well, welcome back to Ohio, Riley. <laughs> Early birthday, nice. Oh, Jen, that's awesome. Painting on slate from dad's barn. I have a ton of slate that I don't know what to do with. I've been thinking about painting projects, not sure. I can't wait to see yours when you're done, Jen. My fear is on the slate that I have, it all seems very thin and fragile. So I haven't done anything with it yet because I'm not sure how sturdy it is. Okay, so Tamisha said early birthday. So happy early birthday, Tamisha. Okay. Oh, oh, Elise, he's a good man preparing dinner for you. You're so spoiled as you should be. We haven't talked about food yet tonight. We usually talk about food. I haven't seen Emily on here. So if Emily's not here, Lori, you'll have to let me know what she's eating tonight. Okay, so it's 745. Let's play a little more in that treat. So if you have a knife, now's the time. If you don't, you can use your makeshift palette knife. If you don't have either of those things, play a little more with the brush. Think about how this might really look in, in real world, right? This would be a little bit darker down here under the knot hole. I would probably do a little darker down here at the corners to give it a little depth and dimension. I might take a little bit of white right here around the top of the knot hole. Okay, so you can do that with a brush, you can do it with a palette knife, you can do it with a makeshift palette knife. Oh, <laughs> leftover pad thai. That sounds really good. Pad thai sounds good. I'm sorry, she has a migraine. Okay, so I'm, I think I'm gonna play with some white. So I'm gonna take that palette knife. And if you have your, your cardboard or your makeshift, same thing, just set the edge in there. So I'm just forming the littlest bit of, littlest edge on that knife. And then I'm, it's almost like buttering toast. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. Okay, let me get close so you can see what I did. Okay, so I've got my palette knife. I'm gonna set it right there in the edge of the white. Again, I'm just kind of like stepping it in there, not scooping paint. I'm just stepping it in there. And let me get close so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna take this palette knife and I'm gonna hold it pretty perpendicular to the canvas. Right, I can lay it down as I go, but I'm gonna start here because I know I want a nice bright highlight here along the top of this knot hole. So if I set this down, oh, 
Oh, that's fun. Well, that's a lot of fun. I'm hoping you could hear the noise that made. You can hear me. I'm not scraping so hard that I'm gonna punch through the canvas, but you can hear that it's like butter on toast, right? You can't scrape too hard because you'll go through the bread, but just enough that you're dragging that paint across there. Now, if you do have a palette knife, remember you have a long edge, you have a short edge, any flat edge will work. So I'm gonna keep playing, I'm, I'm digging that white. I'm gonna put a little more on there. Oh, that's adding some cool texture. Remember, you wanna follow that same contour, right? Don't change things now. Follow that same contour texture. Let's see, I'm gonna take my palette knife with a little bit of black because I wanted to get this dark Y down here. Oh, that's fun. Oh, maybe a little brown. Oh, you guys, I'm loving this. That's fun. Okay, if you don't have a palette knife, what if we play with the brush? So I have my, my big brush, I've cleaned it out. What if I take some brown and I lay some streaks in here? Let me do some white so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, I like the palette knife much better than the brush for this. So if you don't have one, I highly recommend making one with um, with an old piece of mail. Tell you what, I'm gonna make one so I can paint with you, so I can show you. Stand by. Okay, I got my scissors. This is what I'm talking about if you don't have a palette knife. I'm just taking this plate, cutting it, giving myself a square. Again, you can use credit card, you can use old driver's license. Just stepping it in the paint, just setting it in there. And dragging it across your canvas. Oh, that's fun. I like it. So let's keep playing with that. Ooh, ooh, green. Are we ready for some green? Oh, I'm going to take green with my makeshift palette knife. Not going to put a lot on there, but I feel like I need some little bits of, there might be like some funky moss. Just little bits, a little bit of algae. Some lichens. Sean, I feel you cringing right now. My, my husband would be correcting me. He's like, you don't, you don't have moss or algae on a tree. So as my naturalist friend, I apologize if I messed any of that up. But I like the little bits of the little bits of green in here. That's fun. Not too much. I don't want to distract from from my tree bark, so I'm gonna stop because I could put too much on there real fast. Okay, that's fun. <clears throat> Oh, I like that. I want a little more dark down here. That's an important part of the process. Stepping away 
and getting a different look at it. Um, sometimes if I'm not sure if I'm done, I'm like, oh, do I need more? Do I need take a picture of it on your cell phone? And then don't look at the painting, look at that picture on your phone and you'll see things differently. Your phone pumps up the contrast on things and you'll see it differently in a picture on your phone than you will on your actual painting. So if you're not sure, if you're like, what is happening here? Take a picture of it on your phone and look at that picture. See if you're going in a good direction. Something I haven't talked about, um, if you do have a palette knife, I know some of you do, people have a hard time trying to figure out how to hold a palette knife. Don't, um, don't let the handle fool you. I don't think I ever hold my palette knife by the handle. I hold the metal. Do you love that, Tamisha? Isn't that great? The cardboard palette knife knockoff? It's pretty fantastic. The, the trick with the cardboard is turning it to use different edges because that the paint will saturate it and it'll get kind of soggy. So flip it around and use a fresh edge every now and then. Um, I, I don't think I ever hold it by the, by the handle. I'll hold it up close to the blade because I feel I have more control. You can, I hold it like this. I'll sometimes hold it upside down like this. It's whatever makes you comfortable, right? It's whatever makes you happy. So I think I'm gonna do one more thing here to this tree because I can see this black is still a little, a little wet. You know what, strike that, strike that. I think I'm okay if that's a little wet. Okay, let's talk about this as I think through. So we have our bark done on our tree. Up here in the corners, I have little bits of like evergreen greenery. I wanna put that on there, but I'm gonna wait. The way we need to do this to give our raccoon time to dry, we need to put his head on there and do a little bit there and let it dry. While that's drying, we'll put some greenery up here on the tree and then we'll come back to the raccoon. We're gonna have to do him in stages to give him time to dry in between. So I was thinking we'd go ahead and do the greenery up here. I don't think I want to yet. I think I wanna go ahead and map out my raccoon on there first. Make sense? Makes sense. So I'm gonna give you, how about five minutes? So it'll be eight o'clock and we'll be ready to start to map out our, our coon. That should give you plenty of time to, to finish up playing in the bark. For those of you that haven't painted with us before, um, we'll be done Right, we're usually done right around nine o'clock. It's funny, I'm uh, with about four minutes, we'll move on to the raccoon. I'm a control freak in so many aspects of, of my life. There are some things I could care less about, but if I were attending one of these painting classes, and I have before, I've gone to different studios to see how they do things. That was the most frustrating part for me, not knowing how long it was going to take, not knowing where we were going next. And maybe that's because I am an artist. I needed to know the direction we were heading. So I always like to share with you the direction we're going. So that's what I know right now. Um, at, in about three minutes, we're going to map out our, our little coon's head, get his base coat on there while that's drying. We'll put a little greenery in the tree and then we'll come back to our coon. And now, Lori, I'm thinking about pad thai.
okay, truth be told, I'm thinking about egg rolls, but pad thai sounds good. Oh, guys, I love the palette knife in the tree. That texture is fun. <gasps> Crab Rangoon. Oh, Lynn. Crab Rangoons. Is it wrong to get like three orders of Crab Rangoon and call that dinner? Is that wrong? I don't think it's wrong. And you got to eat them when they're hot. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. Thanks for justifying my, my crab rangoon situation. So good. Okay. About another two minutes. And we'll move on to that raccoon. Again, I'm not worried right now about clean water. Don't worry about that yet. It's funny, people, people have sometimes asked me how many paintings I have. I don't even know. Oh my God, Elise, I didn't need to know that. If anybody else is having a Crab Rangoon situation right now, read the comment that Elise just put in the, in the Zoom chat. I probably didn't need to know that. Thank you though. Um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Oh. So I am i don't even know how many paintings I have. I'm sure I have probably a thousand and that's not an exaggeration because I've had the studio uh, five and a half years now, almost, almost July will be six years. So five and a half years. And I don't know, three or four paintings a week, 52 weeks in a year, you can, you can do the math. It's quite a few paintings. Um, but I, I'm thinking about this one and I mentioned earlier, it would be kind of fun to take his scarf and kind of swing it, like have it blow out of the tree. I'm coming to a point. I will take these paintings if I have one I really, really like. And because they're stretched canvases, so they're wrapped around, right? They're stretched, stretched around and stapled on the back. You can go to Meyer Walmart, get a metal wreath hanger, and it will fit up under up under there and you can hang these on your door on your front door so I've done that with paintings my point is it would be fun to hang this one on my door and have our last name right there on the scarf that would be super cute but right now let's move on to the raccoon okay find let's use our big brush I'm gonna squish that around in my cup Clean it out, dry it off. And we're gonna use gray. So it's okay if there's a little dirty water in my brush. I'm gonna use gray for my raccoon. So clean it out, dry it off. And my raccoon, his head is like a big old fat football. Doesn't quite go to the, ed to the edge. If it does, that's fine. But my goal, we'll see if I manage that. My goal is to leave about a finger width of black on either side. We'll see. I may not accomplish that. We'll, we'll see what happens. Okay. So big brush, clean it out, dry it off. I'm gonna take about half and half black and white I'm just mixing a nice medium gray. And I'm gonna use my big brush, but I'm gonna use it skinny ways. Oh, 
Oh, I'm just reading all the comments, thumbtacks, command strips. So many ways you can hang paintings, right? I'm gonna use my big brush, but I'm gonna use a skinny ways to do some sketching. Not fat ways, skinny. So here we go. The top part of his head is ooh, close to the middle, maybe a little higher than the middle of my circle. And again, we're going for football. Top part of his head. Little black, little white. And then bottom part. Something like that. We're mapping him out right now. Okay, and because I, I need to map him out, if I were painting um, a human face, I would put a line down the middle so I know where the nose belongs, I know where the eyes belong. And if you look at the original, you can see it's a dark line, it's a black line that's right there above his nose right there above his nose that goes straight up and down. I'm gonna use my gray to put that on there. Again, it's just helping me map it out. I'll cover it dark later, but it's just gonna help me map out where the middle, the middle of this little dude's face is. Okay, so there's the middle. And then I'm gonna map out his muzzle next. And I'm saying muzzle because it's not just his black nose, it's that bigger, that bigger white part. So that line that is going to be dark later comes about halfway down on the head. And that's where the muzzle starts. And the muzzle is, oh, kind of like a really fat, chubby, upside down heart. That's the part that goes over top of the scarf. This, in a little bit, will become scarf. Right now it's the bottom of his head, but it will become scarf. So again, all I've done right now is mapped it out so I know where his head is gonna be. May look weird right now, but you gotta trust the process, okay? So again, I have this football shape head. This is the bottom part of his head. That's that dark center line between his eyes. And then this is going to be that white muzzle with his little nose in the middle. That little black nose in the middle that my husband pointed out looks like a mushroom. Looks like a black mushroom if you look up close at it. Okay, so now that I have that, I know the direction this is all going. I'm gonna jump down here and put his little arm on. I keep saying his, I shouldn't, um, I shouldn't uh, gender identify there. Might be a girl, hard to say. Okay, I'm gonna keep on with my big brush because that's working for me. If it's not working for you, oh, I love that, sketching with water on black. I do like that to get an idea of where things are gonna live. Let's put that arm on there. Again, my, my big brush is working for me, so I'm gonna keep going with that. If you need to move to a smaller brush, you have a smaller one, okay? So you do what makes you comfortable. I'm gonna stay with that same medium gray. And this is gonna be little dude's arm down here. 
So I'm going to go darker because it's going to kind of disappear. And it's coming right along the bottom of that knot hole. Again, this gap in between is going to be scarf. But this right here is arm. Right along the bottom of that knot hole. And then this little hand. Oh, gotta love raccoon hands, right? Little raccoon hand. Kinda hangs out. Little fingers. Little fingers. Kinda hangs outside the hole a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna move to a smaller brush and give those fingers a little bit of definition. And I want to go a little bit lighter. Got a little index finger, little thumb up here. And you see, I'm doing little brush strokes, little brush strokes. Oh, that's fun. I can play with this here in a little bit and define those fingers a little more. But I like to map things out and get the lay of the land. I know you're gonna you're gonna punch me in the face if I say map things out one more time, right? But that's the way we do it, right? We put big blocks of color on there and then we define it as we go. Right, it gets a little more detailed and a little more detailed. And do you see I started dark gray, almost black back here because it disappears into the, into the knot hole. And then as that little arm comes out, it gets whiter and whiter as it comes out into the daylight. Okay. I can do a little more detail on that later if I need to, but that's the general, that's the general idea. I might take a little more black and disappear this little arm back here, his little shoulder. I want it to just fade off into nothing. Here we go. Okay. So now I know I know where the arm lives. I know where my coon's head lives. So let's let's start working on filling this in with color. Okay. So we're going to fill his head in with color. Everything except his his little white muzzle. We're going to fill that in. We'll do some work up here on these uh, these um, branches up on the tree. Then we'll put the scarf and the hat and then we'll get detailed from there. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my big brush. Let's talk about how we paint fur. I'm going to use my big brush, but I think I'm probably going to use it skinny ways. I'm going to use it up and down and you paint fur in the direction it grows. So if you have a dog, you're gonna put your hand on your dog's forehead and paint or paint, don't paint your dog. You're gonna brush backwards. That's the same way you're gonna paint fur. You're gonna start there and pull back and then work your way down the face as you go. Let me show you. So let's start with a medium gray. So I have my big brush with black half black, half white, like a medium gray. And I'm gonna start here at the top of the head, skinny ways, and I'm gonna pull up, up, up. Let me get close. This is the direction the fur grows, right? This is the direction I would pet this little guy if he were here with me. Like a sunburst. Okay. 
Okay. So that first layer is that medium gray. Then we're gonna go lighter. He has really light eyebrows. So with that same brush, I've got a little gray on there. I'm gonna add white. And I'm doing that same, that same brush stroke. I'm just doing the next, the next layer, the next level, coming down a little bit. How fun is that? This is a great way to paint fur. It's a great way to paint uh, bird feathers. If you were gonna paint um, bird feathers, you'd do the same thing, but like the, the chest of a bird, you'd pull down to have those little feathers hanging down. So I've done medium gray. And then I've gotten lighter. This is the spot that's going to be above those eyes. Oh, cute. <laughs> I don't know why, but my, my raccoon suddenly feels like a cranky old man. It just makes me happy. And then once I have that light on there, I'm gonna go medium gray again, maybe even a little darker. Oh, fun. Oh, he's so cute already. Kind of like a furry rainbow right now. Again, trust the process, right? It looks a little strange right now, but it'll all make sense, okay? What we're doing right now is just trying to get all that texture, that furry texture. Sweet baby looks like a badger. Okay. Okay. I think at this point I'm going to I'm going to stop. I've got I've got a really nice base layer there. I feel like I want to play in that hand a little more. I want to give that hand a little more texture. And the way to get texture is just doing little pull 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 brush strokes. I think I tried to explain it once upon a time when I say little pull brush strokes. Um, I have seen, right, I've been teaching for a long time, so I've seen, I've seen things. I see people do this. That's not what we want when we're doing something like this. Think of your brush like a pendulum. Think of it, so if this is my canvas, think of it like a pendulum. So I'm above it. Oh, a koala, I love that, Lynn. <laughs> Mine could be koala-ish too. We'll see how it turns out. Think of your brush like a pendulum. So I'm not setting it down, dragging and pulling it back up. I'm starting above my canvas. I'm coming down and swiping and coming back, coming off the canvas again. So I'm coming down, swiping and letting go. That's such a difference from setting it down, dragging it and pulling it back up. Okay, I hope that, I hope that helps. I hope that makes sense. Let's see. I'm gonna play with this guy just a little more. I feel like I want a little more light in here because I know Coons have those dark eyes, right? He's a bandit. So I think I want a little more light 
right in through here. Oh, fun. And we can play with him, play with him more later, work on his fur. I think the more you play, the better it gets. Okay. But at this moment, I'm gonna stop with him. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be done with him. I'm gonna let that first base layer dry. Okay. I'm gonna go up and play in the trees a little bit, I think. I keep saying that and yet I'm like, oh, let's play just a little, just a little bit. But like, just like with the tree, we gotta let things dry. Okay, put my big brush in my water cup. Lynn, I can't wait to see your koala. It's gonna be adorable, adorable. And didn't we say that's part of being an artist? is just letting whatever's gonna happen, happen and being okay with it. Okay, I'll let that dry a little bit. Let's play up here in the tree a little. What if I take one of my big round brushes and this is optional, but I think it's, I think it's fun. I think it adds a little something to your, to your painting. I'm gonna take a little bit of brown. I have a big fat pointy brush, big fat round. And I'm gonna put maybe a, maybe a bow right here. And you can't see it because it's brown on brown, but it's there. And what if I take some green? And I put um, needles, pine needles. I'm using the same kind of technique that I used with the fur. So on that brown streak I put there, I'm setting that round brush on there and I'm pulling out, I'm creating like little upside down Vs. Do that again. So my brown line is right there. I'm pulling out, 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 out. And because it's winter, I'm gonna take, I still have green on my brush. I grabbed a little bit of white. We highlight some of those in white. Fun, that's fun. It's just a little something extra. You don't have to do it, but it gives us something fun to play with to get away from our, our raccoon face for a minute. So I'm gonna do another one up here. I'm gonna do a little, what do I wanna do? Maybe this one goes this way. Ooh, did that in green. I'm gonna pull my, pull my Vs. I'm pulling from that green out, out. Little upside down Vs. Green and brown. If you have different greens you wanna play with, this is a lovely time to play with those. If you have phthalo, mix some phthalo with a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white. You'll get a fun lime color. It's fun, I feel like I need another one right there. Like everything else on that, on that tree, making sure I have plenty of paint in my brush. Okay. That's fun. I'm gonna do one more. If you need to see that one more time, I'm gonna do it in green so you can see. So I'm gonna put my, my branch, my little twiglet on first. So a line for a twig. 
and then set that brush. Again, I'm using one of my, one of my fat round brushes. I'm setting my brush on that line and I'm essentially creating these. They're like little mustaches. Really nothing fancy, nothing too detailed. It's kind of fun. And then I went back with that messy brush with a little bit of white, just to highlight a couple of those places. A couple of those needles. Okay. Whew, we're doing it. It's happening. It's very exciting. I think it's time to give him a hat. Again, giving this time to dry. Yep, we'll give that time to dry. So let's go ahead and put a hat on there. Let's do it. So the thing to remember when we get ready to put the hat on there, if you're using the same paint I'm using, if you're using student grade acrylic paint, it's going to be very transparent. So I want red on there. I can't use just red. It's not strong enough. I'm going to have to use either a little bit of white or a little bit of black. I think I'm going to use a little bit of white that's going to make it a little pinkish, but I'm going to mix a little bit of brown with it to maybe warm it up and make it a little less baby pink. Let me show you. I'm going to use a medium brush. Clean it out and dry it off. And the color for my hat, mostly red. Again, you can do whatever color you want. If you're following me, I'm mostly red. Tiny bit of white to make it less transparent to make it more solid. And that's gonna make it kind of pinkish. And I'm gonna use a little bit of brown that's gonna warm it up. I might even use a little bit of green. Why green, you ask? Green is opposite red on the color wheel. And I know when we mix opposites, we get brown, right? Sometimes not an attractive brown, but brown for the most part. Okay, the hat, the hat comes down pretty far, right? It fills this, it fills this top, fills this hole. And it goes up, ooh, it's kind of like a nice big, nice big roundy triangle, right? So that hat is gonna sit right there on his head. A little more red in there, there we go. I have that brim or that uh, that part of the hat that you roll, right? A little part that rolls up. I'll put detail on it later, but I want to get that first coat on there. Because even with adding, um, even with adding a little bit of white and a little bit of brown, it's still still kind of transparent. And I'll want to play in there and get, get some little V's in there so it looks knit, so it looks like a knit stocking cap. So we'll have to give it another coat. So there's that. Let's see, that's the part that rolls, that rolls up. And then I want to do the top part of the toboggan comes up this way. And then I want to do that little, that little poofy ball there. Really, your hat is whatever you want it to be. <laughs> That's silly. That's so silly. We'll fill it in. And I should probably mention this. Do you see the way I'm filling that in? 
I'm following the contour of the hat and then straight up and down in the middle and left curve to the left. A lot of times the way you paint something in really helps it take shape. Um, if I were painting a coffee cup, we would do the same kind of thing. We would follow the curve of the coffee cup to help, to help it look round. So to help that toboggan hat have the right shape, I'm pulling everything from this, uh, this poofy ball down to the left, curved, straight up and down in the middle, curve to the right on the right side. And again, you can see it's pretty transparent still, but that's okay. I know I'm gonna give it another coat when it's dry. Oh, that's fun. Okay. And then my little uh, my little poof ball out here. It's like the fur, but it's from the middle. It's like a little starburst. Pull out, out, out. Oh, how fun is that? <laughs> He's so silly. While I have that same color on my brush, I want to put his that put his little scarf on there. Okay. The same color. And I'm gonna do this and then and then we'll probably give it a few minutes to dry. Okay, so everybody can get to the same spot. So that scarf sits right up under that muzzle. That's why we haven't painted the muzzle white yet, because we want it to be, we want it to sit over top of the scarf. That'll help add a little dimension to our painting, to our little guy. Ooh, ooh throwing stuff, sorry. That'll add a little dimension to our dude. So that scarf here, underneath, underneath where that muzzle's gonna go, behind that little hand. And my scarf is not as thick as the one on the, um, on the original. You know what, I'm okay with that. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Here we go. Now this would be the time if you decided that you wanted the scarf. I kind of do. I kind of want the scarf to blow outside the tree. I'm going to do it. You don't have to. This is optional. Don't do it if you don't want because it's not on the original, but I'm going to have this scarf right here. <laughs> Blow right outside the tree. And again, you can see that red is transparent, so I'll have to give it another coat. Oh, let's see if that's there. I feel like I feel like he has it tied, so it needs another little piece right there. There we go. That's so silly. <laughs> That's so silly. Okay. Oh, that's fun. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do, I think we should probably um, 
put some play in the hat a little more, um, give it those little V marks, play in the scarf a little bit, and then we'll come back and we'll finish up our, uh, our raccoon face. So might need the blow dryer when we're done with the hat and the scarf because you don't want to get pink in your fur, right? But I think I want to go ahead and finish the hat and the scarf now. So I'm going to go to my, um, my round brush and I'm going to use red, little brown, and a tiny, tiny touch more white. So I have a difference. And I'm going to start on the scarf. And I'm going to do, if you're knitting, knitting would have, um, look like little V's. So I'm going to do little rows of little messy V's. They look like little hearts, don't they? Maybe we should have done this for Valentine's Day. How cute is that? Oh, that's cute. Let's see. I wanna do the same thing up here on the hat on this brim, I want to do these in rows. V here, and then another row vertically. So these stacked on these. Mine are, ve they're very messy. There's nothing real specific about them. It's just enough that gives it Gives it a little more texture, makes it a little more interesting, a less plain. This is the point that if Alicia were here, I would remind her to breathe. So I'm reminding everyone to breathe right now, right? This is going to be what it's going to be. We have to take a look at it, the, the entire finished product when we're done. We don't judge it halfway through. And I keep saying it's adorable because I can, I can see how it's turning out and it's looking pretty darn cute. Let's see, I think I want some, the idea of little V's up here. Making that hat just a little more, a little more interesting. Oh, I need to take that same color and go in my little, my little poof ball. Oh yeah, Lynn, ears. We'll we'll do ears. I'm going to do ears probably, thank you for the reminder, probably the last thing I do will be ears once this hat has had time to dry. Let's see, and up to this point, I've done um, lighter, right? I've gone, I've done red and then I've gone a little bit lighter. There's also power in going darker too. So let me fin out, finish out my little, my little V's that are lighter. Okay. Anytime you go lighter, you can also go darker. So I'm going to go red with no white, just a little bit of brown. And then I can come here along the bottom rim of that hat, darken that up a little. I can use that red with that little bit of brown 
and come right here. This would be shadow above this brim. I could give myself some little lines here. It's one of those things you can continue to play with that hat and do, do all kinds of fun stuff with it. But in the interest of time, because I could even go one step lighter and instead of having a two-tone hat, go a little lighter and add another layer of, of little highlights. But again, in the interest of time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep moving. I say that, right? But you like how I just keep going. Oh, I need a little fringe on my, on my scarf. And little fringes. Okay. So now would be the time to clean your water out if you so choose. Now would be the time because we're gonna move on. I'm gonna put that white muzzle on there. I'm gonna do some whiskers. And I don't want any green or red or anything else hanging out in my brush. So how about uh, 8.45? That gives you about five and a half, six minutes. How about 8.45, we move on. We'll, we'll come back and we'll do all the fine details. The very last thing we'll do is uh, we'll put some snow on there, okay? So 8.45, that gives you about five-ish minutes, all right? We'll be back. Clean water, clean white.
can you Facebook message me, Lise? Because I'm using my um, I'm using my phone to record. Okay, can't wait to see. I'm gonna follow my own advice and go get um, go get clean water, because that's a whole hot mess going on in there. Okay, two minutes and we're ready to we're ready to wrap this up. Two minutes. Oh my God, Lisa, that's amazing. <laughs> so I can't wait to see that in the in the group picture at the end, Lisa. That'll be awesome. Well done, sister. Okay, ready to go. Time to time to move on. Here we go. Quarter till. Okay. So let's see. We need to let's go ahead and put that muzzle on there. So I think everybody went and got clean white. Um, let's go ahead and put the muzzle on there. And then I'm gonna work my way out from there, I think. Here we go. Medium brush, medium brush, clean it out, dry it off with white. Okay. With white. And what did we say before? This is a very rounded part. And it sits down, it comes over top of the spark a little bit. A very rounded, chubby little heart. Oh, I'm seeing it. It's a happening. I'm using so much caution with this because I'm so afraid that scarf is still going to be wet and I don't want to get pink in that in that muzzle. So if you do wind up with pink in that muzzle, stop, clean your brush out really, really good. Wait for that to dry and go back and paint it again. That's my, that's my word of wisdom, my word of guidance. Because if you try to cover it while it's wet, you'll just move that pink around. Okay, there we go, muzzle. Cute. OK. 
Okay. So I'm gonna stick with that medium brush because I'm feeling pretty good about it, but I'm gonna use it skinny ways. So if you wanna go to your pointy brush, you can. With white on there, I'm gonna add just a little bit of brown, maybe a tiny, tiny bit of black. And right here at the top, I'm gonna ease that up just, just a little, oh, just the tiny, tiniest bit. Just little tiny, oh, little tiny hairbrush strokes. Oh, tiny, tiny. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Again, just a tiny bit of brown, a tiny bit of black. And I just did little, oh, just little tiny, little tiny pull, pull, pull up brush strokes. And I'm pulling up because that's the direction the fur grows, right? Okay. So from there, let's keep going. I'm going to start with that little, I'm using tiny bits of paint now, white with a tiny bit of brown, tiny bit of black, but it's a lot of white. And I want to go back this lighter spot right here, and I want to make it even lighter. Even lighter. I'm just accentuating that light a little bit. By accentuating that and making it lighter, it's gonna make that mask part look darker. Give it him a little white eyebrows right now. I'm going to take that one step further and I'm going to connect this here on either side. There, right there. So look what has happened. I wound up with that dark spot right in the middle, that, that dark line right in the middle by connecting those light, those light eyebrows from the nose. Oh, so fun. Stinking cute. I even took a little bit of those, a couple of those furs, put them up, up to the brim of the hat just a little bit. Just a little. Making sure if you're gonna do that, let's make sure that brim is dry. Oh, that's fun. So fun. Okay. I am playing a little. All right. So let's go ahead and put our eyes in there. We have that spot where those eyes live now, right? Those are going to be black. We'll do black and then we'll do uh, we'll do highlights, but let's do black first. Remember, if you're starting to feel frustrated, just put your put your brush down. Don't feel the need to keep up with me. Put your brush down. It'll be okay. You can come back to the video. Okay. So right in here, this is where I'm gonna put those, those black eyes. And they're gonna be really hard to see because they're black, but we'll give them highlights when they're dry. So one there and one right there, right there, just black. Right beside those white, that white V we put on there. While we're at it, I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a little nose. And what did we say earlier? It looks like a mushroom. 
So it's a little upside down, it's like a little umbrella. A little line that pulls down. <laughs> I might even come down here and give him the littlest bit of dark right underneath his, his little muzzle there, a little shading. That's fun. While I have dark on my brush, I'm going to, I want to accentuate this dark here just a little bit. That dark uh, line right in between his eyes. There we go. That just made me feel better. And then ears. Let's do ears while we've got dark on here. Uh, for those of you that weren't with us right at the beginning, I'm recording this. As soon as the recording's over, it usually takes about five minutes. Excuse me. I get a, a link from Zoom. As soon as we're done and I get that link from Zoom, I'll post the recorded link up on the event page so you can go back and watch because I know I'm going through this end part kind of fast. And it, it's hard when you get to the details, but in the interest of time, I don't wanna keep everyone all night either. Um, but I'll post that Zoom link in the event so you can, you can watch it immediately as soon as we're done. And then tomorrow that'll be replaced with the YouTube video link, okay? So don't, again, don't feel like you have to keep up with me right now. Okay, ears, where are those ears? Those ears, they're gonna be outside where the eyes are. Arm out there. I'm gonna do little black, little black roundy rounds first. So it's just a little black. Ooh. I guess it's a circle more than anything, right? Maybe a little flat on the bottom. A little roundy round up at the top. And then with that black on my brush, I'm gonna to start to add white. I'm gonna get close because I want him to be black in the middle and then get lighter, get some gray on there with those little choo-choo brush strokes, those little pull, pull, pull brush strokes. Okay, so I've gone gray. I'm gonna add a little more white and get a little whiter out closer to the tip of that ear. Oh, that's cute. So while we're coming to the end of our, our time here tonight, um, I will, I'll give you all the opportunity to unmute and we can talk for a little bit. Um, but, oops, lost my picture, stand by, there we go. Um, I would love when you're done to send me um, either Facebook message me or email me a picture of you with your painting. And then I will collage those all together and put them out on uh, put them out on social media and that will serve as our group picture. Since we're not at the studio together, we can't get together for a group picture, but that's a good way for us to have a group picture. Oh, that's cute. Little ears. I think one's bigger than the other, but that's okay. We're not going to judge. All right. So let's see. I'm going to, at this point, I'm going to go to my super duper teeny tiny brush and I'm going to work on those eyes. So I'm going to get a little bit of water on that, dry it off, and I'm going to take a dark gray. So black and white, I'm gonna keep it pretty dark. And if you look at, if you look at any, any animal and you look at a portrait of them, um, humans too, right? Our bottom, the bottom part of our eyelids, they're very, they're very moist, right? So they catch light right along the bottom part of their eyes, our eyes, I should say. So I'm gonna take this gray 
and I'm going to outline the bottom, just the bottom part of that eye. You know, I might give a little bit on the top too, just a little, but mostly on the bottom. Let's do that again because it's where, um, that's where your tears hang out, right? That's where there would be just a little bit of moisture down there. Right there along the bottom. It's very subtle. Be a little on the top, but not much, mostly on the bottom. And that helps define those dark eyes in that dark face too. And then with that little tiny brush, we need to give light. We need to put some light in his eyes. So with white, I'm gonna do a little blurp, like a little, I don't know, a little frown in the top part of those eyes. A little bit of light there. Oh, that just brought him to life. While I have that little bit of white on my brush, I can put some whiskers in out here from the muzzle. That's where this little tiny brush is fantastic. So I'm setting that white on that muzzle and pulling out and letting go. Out and let go. <laughs> I feel like the light in the eyes needs to be a little bit bigger. Oh, the mister's home. Oh, that's good. That's good stuff. Okay. I feel like I want to give just a little, littlest bit of outline down there at the bottom of the eye. Looks like moisture, a little bit of moisture catching. Oh, a little highlight on the nose. Let's do that too. Just a little blurp. While I've got that teeny tiny little brush, I'm gonna take a little bit of black and give some lines in between those fingers just to separate them a little bit. There we go. Just doing little, little tiny detail things. Oh, that is so cute, you guys. And then it's nine o'clock, so to be respectful, I see somebody just said, should we be adding snowflakes? Um, nine o'clock, so class is technically over, but it is snow time. So you can decide whether or not you want to do the snow. I'm going to do one thing here before I do that. I feel like I need a little bit of a shadow underneath that arm. So I'm going to take a little bit of brown and black, just a tiny, tiny bit. And I'm going to do a little line right here underneath. Just a tiny little shadow. There we go. Adds a little dimension to it. Okay. So the original does have snow on it. Now there are a couple ways you can tackle this. You can take your big brush with white. Make sure it's nice and clean and you've got clean white and I'm going to kind of like lay my lay my brush down very messy. Okay, you can tackle it that way. And by me laying my brush down, I'm almost smacking the canvas with it. I think I might do this with some with some big snowflakes. We got to do a couple on the on the raccoon. This is where it's hard, right? Because I worked so hard, I don't want to mess him up. But without snow in front of him, it's kind of weird. <laughs> you hear that? Can you hear me hitting the hitting the canvas? Um, if you if you take this technique too, you have to stay random. This is hard for me because I want to form a pattern, and you don't want a pattern. So let's see, I've done that with my big brush. What if we do that same thing with a smaller brush? 
And then I'm gonna go really small to a toothbrush. So again, I've got a smaller brush, I've got it loaded up with paint. I'm just kind of smacking the canvas in places. Okay. If you so choose, you can now use your toothbrush to get some really small, um, some really small flakes. You might do this outside. Anytime you splatter with a toothbrush, you have to thin the paint down a little bit. It's too thick to come off the brush by itself. So I'm gonna take my toothbrush into my water. We go tap, tap, tap. So there's a little water in there, but not a ton. I'm gonna take a big old chunk of clean white paint, like a, a chunk of it, okay? I'm gonna go to a clean spot on my plate. You see, I'm using my other plate because I'm out of clean spots on my, on my palette. And I'm gonna scrub, scrub, scrub. Using the little bit of water in this toothbrush to thin that paint down a little bit. And you're gonna make this the very last thing you do because once you get snow on there, that's pretty much it. Then I'm actually gonna use this plate to shield a little. I'm gonna hold it bristles up. And if I pull my finger across this way, the paint is gonna fly back the other direction. This is where it's really important to check your surroundings. Make sure you're not getting paint on on your sofa, as I always do, because my living room's right there. But you can put as much snow on there as you want. And with that, I'm gonna call that done. Oh, that is so fun. I love him. I absolutely love him. Okay, the very last thing you wanna do as an artist, is sign your painting. This is where my paint pen comes in handy because like I said earlier, I'm really bad at signing with a brush. You can sign with a brush if you want, thin your paint down with a little bit of water, get it to the consistency of ink um, and that'll help it flow a little more, right? Thin it down just a little bit. I'm gonna use a paint pen. You can use a paint pen or a Sharpie. I like to sign mine on the front. If you don't want to sign it on the front, you can sign it on the back. If you sign it on the back, never here, always out here. If you sign here, it could bleed through onto the front. Okay, so I'm going to sign down here in the corner. And it's S, S, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to do a little 21. And with that, I'm going to call that done. <gasps> So fun. So now I would love for you all to, when you're done, take a picture of your painting. I love to see you in the pictures and send it to me. Everything I've received by tomorrow morning, I will collage those all together and put them out as our group picture on, on uh, Facebook, on social media. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording now and then I'll give you the opportunity to unmute yourself so we can talk for a little bit. So for the recording, thank you so much for joining me for Painting Through the Pandemic. This was a lot of fun, a little challenging, but a lot of fun, okay? I, I challenge you that if, if you were working your way through it, go back and do it again, right? Now that you know, a lot of times art is about repetition. And once you know, the direction we're going and the way paint works and you can see things that you might do differently next time go go back and do it again if you want to that's that's how we all learn right time and time and repetition so you are so welcome donna thank you all so much for joining me tonight for painting through the pandemic i'm shauna sue from crooked door studio thanks guys